A common chemical reaction your students might be familiar with uses vinegar and baking soda. When these two combine, it creates a gas called carbon dioxide. We're going to be looking at this with a 35 millimeter film canister, which we're going to put a little bit of each in and create a reaction. So with a, about a tablespoon of vinegar at the bottom and a little bit of baking soda at the top, you want to close the lid very quickly and set it down with the lid on the bottom. As you do that, it's going to explode in about a few seconds, one or two seconds. You want to move back and you're going to see what happens when that gas builds up a pressure inside, it shoots up in the air and releases that gas and that pressure. In this activity, we're going to be looking at a chemical change using the same ingredients, the same materials that we used outside, vinegar and baking soda. Although this time inside, we're going to do it with a bottle and balloon so that we can see that reaction a little bit more clearly. So you're going to need those ingredients, a couple of funnels, your bottle, hopefully with a smaller opening, a balloon and a spoon so that you can put in some of your baking soda. So you want to start off by putting in uh, about a quarter of your bottle full of vinegar. And so this is going to be one of our main reactants here, as we saw when we were outside. In the other funnel here, you're going to put in the mouth of your balloon so that it's easier to fill. And you're going to put two full tablespoons of baking soda in it. And we're going to leave it at the very bottom of the balloon here. And you're going to see why in just a second. So once you've filled your balloon, make sure all that baking soda is down at the bottom there. And you wrap your balloon over the mouth of the, uh, the bottle here. And when you're ready, you can dump all of this baking soda inside at once. Then you're going to see the reaction. This activity should be a good visual for your students to understand what's happening during the chemical change when these two substances are mixed together. Now remember, a uh, chemical change is permanent, which means that it's not reversible. Much like when an egg is fried or boiled, it can't return to its original state. So there are three main ways that chemical changes generally occur, and that's either by mixing substances together, heating them, or passing electricity through them. We've looked at some activities that showcase chemical reactions and permanent change. Now, we've spoken a little bit about physical change, but remember this is when uh, a substance moves from one state to another, for instance, like water, from liquid to gas, and it can be moved back, which means it's reversible. That's a physical change. So a chocolate bar might melt, but you can then put it back in its solid state again in its original configuration, which means it's undergoing a uh, physical change. Now a little bit more complex is looking at pop and how carbon dioxide, which is the gas that's dissolved within it, uh, undergoes a physical change when you open the can. We're going to need some raisins, a glass, and we're going to take a look. So once you're ready, you want to pour your ginger ale into your glass. You want to tip the glass a little bit so that you can conserve as much carbon dioxide as you can. Now I use ginger ale because it's clear so we can see what's happening with our raisins here. So once you do that you can take two raisins and you just pop them in. They're going to go to the bottom and you should get a bit of an elevator effect here where they just hop up and down and up and down and what's essentially happening is the carbon dioxide that's dissolved within the pop is releasing because of the decrease in pressure because you've taken it out of the can. And when this is happening, those bubbles sort of cling to any imperfection. And a raisin has a, a rigid side here, uh, or I should probably say rugged. And it clings to it at the bottom. It raises it up just sort of like an elevator. It floats up with the bubbles. And then once those bubbles take off into the air, it just drops down and it starts all over again. So this is a physical change because this carbon dioxide that's dissolved can be repressurized and put back into the soda. So that's a reversible physical change. A similar activity you can do with your students demonstrating physical change uh, takes place outside, certainly outside in this case, 
and not in the classroom. The principles are quite a bit similar than the floating raisins within the pop, but this time we're going to use the all-famous Diet Coke or Diet Pepsi with Mentos. And what you're going to do is you're going to drop the Mentos into the pop bottle. Now, in order to do that correctly, you're going to need to roll up a piece of paper and tape that together here using your tape. And you're going to take the Mentos out of the packaging and you're going to slide it into that roll. And that tube is crucial because you're going to take a playing card, you're going to set it on your open pop bottle, and you want all the Mentos to land in the bottle roughly at the same time because the reaction is going to occur, you're going to want to move back. So set them up top there, and when you're ready, you pull the card, they all fall in, move back, and we'll see what happens. What happened out there? Why did the pop explode outside of the bottle? That's a really good question for your students. They'll likely come up with some very interesting and engaging explanations as to why that occurred and why it achieved the heights that it did. But what essentially happens is when the Mentos candy is dropped into the bottle, it goes down to the bottom really quickly. And as we saw with the raisins and ginger ale uh, activity, the uh, carbon dioxide that's dissolved within the pop uh, comes out from between the spaces in the water molecules and clings to something, the new found item that's inside of the pop. And Mentos candy has all sorts of imperfections on its surface which uh, the bubbles cling to very easily. And all those bubbles cling to and the candy and expand at the bottom very quickly and as they shoot up well, there's a lot of pop above it that it pushes out against and it sends it all clear out of the bottle, just like we saw. When you're trying this experiment, you'll want to use Diet Coke or Diet Pepsi uh, and real Mentos candy. Those are the most effective ingredients uh, for what we saw. Your students might ask, well, what happens when I drink uh, Diet Coke or Pepsi and eat Mentos candy in my stomach? Am I going to have this kind of reaction? Well, the answer is no, they can try it. But uh, most of the carbon dioxide uh, uh, has come out, is released a little bit before it goes into their stomach, and other things are at play as well. But uh, they might have some interesting questions to this. They can go online and they can see a lot of, of nifty examples of this activity uh, done uh, in formation uh, uh, to music and, and other things as well. It's my hope that our brief exploration of some of these concepts will help you in the planning of your unit and that you'll be able to have some fun with your students along the way.